What's up, Carlos? Bishop, how you doing? Just trying to see if anybody wants to get in on this conversation we about to have here. Hey Bishop, did you see that video that was on my site about the uh, the guy talking about tithing? Did you see it? It's interesting. Man, I'm doing good. I can't complain. Sitting in the Sitting in my lab now, um, getting ready to start pulling up some more material to work on here for today. Hey man, we all need them. Uh, I can't think of his name, but the video is on my um, it's on my page. Um, I tagged a bunch of pastors on it um, to see what they thought about it. Probably nothing you haven't heard before. I think it was just the manner that, in which he presented it that was interesting. Young guy. Yeah. Trying to wait to see if there's anybody else coming up on here. Uh, if not, I may have this discussion tonight around 9 or 10 o'clock when I get out of the movie theater, which might be good. It'd be more people signing on. All right, there's four people on here. We getting there. All right, well, I'll get started. How you doing, Pam? It's good to see you. It's good, to, good to hear from you. Good to see you. I see your picture, but it's good to hear from you. Um, I'll just give a few tips um, on some things I've been thinking about or some things that have been working for me. Uh, I think the first thing is is that uh, starting three, about three, maybe four years ago, I realized after talking to being mentored by a couple of people who who own their record labels and who have and who have um people who own their record labels and who have um been successful in getting product in the stores and things like that. One of the things they advised me to do is to make sure I have reserve. And you need reserve finances, you need reserve product uh you need reserve everything. Um, so I try to make it a point, not always successful in doing so, but try to make it a point to have about $10,000 in reserve before I start a new product. So that means the $10,000 is not really supposed to be spent. Uh, it's supposed to be reserved. So that means I need more than $10,000 to start to start up a new venture or whatever over that ten thousand dollars what I use to pay for records, CDs, manufacturing, and then that reserve is used just in case um, I run into a financial problem or in a um, in a case situation that I'm in now where you know Walmart or Target will come back and say, hey, we want more product, and you know I haven't collected from the product that I already have out because it takes about sixty to one hundred twenty days to really see a return from any product in the store so <clears throat> I use some of that reserve in that instance to pay for extra product or to travel or something of that nature so it's always good to have reserve I think that's something that we really don't talk about we really don't concentrate on we just spend up we spend all the money we need to spend to get our product done make sure the CD is as great as it needs to be we make sure that our outfits are together um, 
We have we pay for release concerts, release events, um, all kind of stuff. Um, so, um, but we don't have reserve. We're not planning for the future. We're not planning for uh, God's favor to move in our lives. Uh, we're not planning for any of that because you know God can move and create a huge situation for you, and you can be you know really selling records and doing great things, and then you don't have mm -hmm. the money to keep it going. So. You got to you got to have that reserve going on. Um, another thing is that I'm, <clears throat> I'm uh, I know people are doing right now is, is build your own team. You know, once you pay people across the country to do work for you, it's uh, if you're an independent music label owner, it, it's a, it's incumbent upon you to learn what those people are doing that you're paying so that you can build your own team. Build your own radio promoter, have your own marketer, have your own brander. Teach people that are close to you, that love you, that support your ministry, what it is that you do, what it is that you're trying to do, so that um, they can become those people that you're paying thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month, two thousand, some up further than that. You're paying those people that kind of money every month. You can't continue to pay those people that kind of money, <clears throat> uh, even with reserve. So you need to you need to teach people that are around you. Uh, people who that that, that want to learn the music business, maybe form a, maybe college students, people who are taking marketing in college, people who are taking music business in college, pay some of them. You can pay them reduced rates, uh, severely reduced rates. They just trying to eat. Pay some of them to help you with your to make you their test dummy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so that they can help you with your product, and you'd be surprised how far you go. Uh, especially when it comes to stuff like social media. You know, if you don't want to be on social media all the time, if you don't want to spend your life on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, um, then hire somebody to do it. And, you know, people, I mean, people would do it for $100, $100 a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, mo I mean, you know, I mean, that's, that's like cheap considering the time that you spend on social media. So build your team. Build your team. Your team should consist of, um, if not you, Somebody that handles your uh, engagements. Um, now, be mindful. you got to have engagements for somebody to handle them. So, you know, if you're just going to hire a manager and you ain't got nothing for them to manage, then, you you know, you make people like me laugh because I call you and then you tell me, well, call my manager. And I know for a fact you ain't got nothing going on. So, you know, some of y'all just fooling yourselves with a manager. You need in order to get a manager, you have to have something to manage, and it needs to be beyond what you are personally capable capable of doing as an indie artist or indie label owner. So, where was I? I got off on a tangent there. Uh, you need to, you know, as far as building your team, you need to have a manager if needed, um, somebody to learn marketing to do marketing. But basically, marketing at this point in gospel is social media. Uh, you know, you still can do grassroots like flyers, postcards. Go to churches, you know, put flyers in their lobby areas and things like that, wherever they allow you. Um, you need um, somebody to work radio, learn radio and work it. You got to learn radio to work it. Uh, you got to learn how it works. And you got to build relationships with people. And if you don't have those relationships, then maybe that be, maybe that area will be the one where you'll hire somebody that's professional until you build somebody up to the point where they can do radio for you and have those relationships. Um. And then you also need distribution. So you need somebody to work on that. Or if you're not going to do national distribution or submit for that, then you can figure out a way with somebody on your team to make sure that churches and things like that have will have access to your product. Because at this point, very few people are going to the stores. They're streaming. And the only way they're going to buy a physical product is if the product is in their presence at the time, at the place that they are at. And most of our product buying audience is still on Sunday morning in church. So you need to find a way to get your product to those people um, so they can buy your product. Otherwise, again, you're going to have a CD release concert or you're going to do individual engagements. Mm -hmm. And that'll be the only way that you can sell your product. There are many ways to skin a cat. Um, don't get caught up with all of what you see on TV and all of what you hear on the radio concerning gospel, the gospel music or gospel music industry. Many of us are doing well because we built a firm, solid foundation in what we're trying to do. Um, so those are some tips that you can do, uh, some, it, it, you can use in running your label. 
I think the first thing I, I mentioned was reserve. You know, have a reserve. Reserve funding. Um, and that reserve funding is only used in case of emergency. So that means the funding that you really need for your record or your mini records or artists that you sign, um, you need to take that funding and hold it in reserve and, and, and build up other funding to do your CD work. The second thing is to build a team. Build a team of people around you that can help you do what you need to do. I um, mean, even on social media, you know, if you got, if you get five or ten people to post everything that you put up or to agree to connect with other people that will post everything that you put up, or if you direct a church choir or whatever, and you get your church choir on social media or email, and they post everything that you put up, then you're making some mm -hmm. serious headway. I mean, I push, I push conferences, workshops. Things like that all year round. The only way I'm able to get to a lot of people is because people are liking and sharing. And I've got people, especially my group members, who are willing to like and share everything I have so, people, so that the word can get out. Other thing you want to do is have catchy titles and catchy things like that so that people will, uh, you know, be, will be most likely to, uh, uh, to look at what you got. Videos are the way to go now. Everything is through video. T video and texting. I mean, you can you can you can have a long paragraph about your life and everything and all that. All that. nobody's reading it. Very few people. Only people who are reading it are people who really, really, really love you. Unless it's a super hard story. Other than that, where whatever you need to say to your audience or the people you're trying to reach, video, text, or in person. Video, text, in person. Video, text, in person. Those three things are working right now in this industry. Um, and when you do a video, make sure you got something to say. Don't post your meal. Don't post because people won't take you seriously. They won't take your business seriously. They won't take what you're trying to do seriously. If you're posting folly all the time on Facebook, then that makes sense. I, if you if you tell jokes every day and then all of a sudden you want to be deep and serious, I'm probably not going to read your deep and serious stuff because I'm used to you telling jokes. And that's what I want to hear when I'm on your page, a joke, mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. what you've been doing for the last 30 to 40 days. You see what I'm saying? So you can switch around. Another thing, too, is when you're dealing with social media, take all the friends off your page that don't respond to anything you post. Put some people on your page that actually will talk and respond to you and will conversate with you mm -hmm. because those are the people that will um, share your posts. All these other bishops and reverends and people and notable people that you f friended on Facebook because you thought it would make your page a l little bit more credible or you thought they might be looking at something that you posted. They're not looking. Especially when you see something, you, you, got, you got 550 friends in common with a certain person. They're not watching your page. You got to learn social media algorithms to even learn how to reach those people. So I, w I take all those... I do a clean slate every other month of people that I don't, either don't know, haven't heard from in a long time, or I know they're not reading my post. And they can tell me all the time, oh, I read your post, not respond. If you don't respond, then I ain't got no use for you because I'm trying to run a business. I need your help. You're not on my page just to be on my page. You're on my page because I got a, I got a mission to accomplish. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, Build your team, have a reserve. The last thing I want to talk about is overhead. Okay, you're only going to sell a thousand. If you're only going to order a thousand CDs, and your uh, then your budget shouldn't be over ten thousand dollars because your budget for your whole project, start to finish, shouldn't be over ten thousand dollars. If you're only going to sell a thousand CDs, you know that's your potential, which means you may not sell a thousand CDs. You may just sell eight hundred. Then you shouldn't spend over what you're going to sell. Then you won't have to worry about losing no money, and you won't have no no horror story like so many people do, uh, of of all these products in the basement and nowhere to sell them, nobody to buy them. So, you know, go go a cheap, less uh, economical way that will still give you quality product, and don't spend a lot of overhead. So when you start your product, you know, if you say, hey, I got a small audience or whatever, but my audience is loyal and faithful. Then you order enough product for that small audience, 
And then that small audience will take care of you until you build a bigger audience. And then you can keep doing records. And you don't have to worry about being in the hole. This majority of independent artists are in the hole financially. And that's because of overhead. Overhead and reserve. You had this brilliant idea that you're going to sell 5,000 records. Do you know how hard it is to sell 5,000 records? Do you know how hard it is to sell 100 records at a venue? It is extremely hard. People got to love you to buy 100 CDs. And if you sold them before, I guarantee you're not selling them everywhere you go unless you're just that good. And some people are. But the majority of us, you know, we hit and miss. We go places, we sell 30, 40 here if we sell that much. Some, some places we sell big, big, big amounts of CDs. But the majority of us don't sell that kind of CD. We don't sell that many CDs. So you don't need to have this big old overhead. You know, even if you belong to a mega church and the mega church loves you, all them folks are not going to buy your CD. They're just not going to do it. You know, pastor can hold your CD up in the air, but there will be a strong contingency that will. And you need to plan for that contingency. And if you run out, then you can tell everybody, I sold so many products. You can have 50 pieces. But it's just the perception that gets mm -hmm. people going. You can say, I sold all this product. I out, I got sold out. Then everybody will, will come running, wanting to know how they, can get you, how they can get your product. Because the perception is that you sold out. Doesn't matter how many you sold. It's the fact that you sold out. Because everybody wants to get on a moving train. Now, if it was now, now, if they say, "Man, he had all that product and went, but ten people in the line, he had all these boxes laid out there," then everybody will all. Then, then the assumption is, especially among African Americans, boy, we some, we we'll some train riders, okay? So the assumption would be then that you know, hey man, he didn't do that well. He must not, you know, tag. But you know, if you had thirty pieces and you sold out, and people in the line still forming, then people, then you know. Then the perception is is that you sold out, and now everybody got to run and run and wonder what's going on. How you can furnish more product as needed as you see fit. So those are just some tips I wanted to give you. I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go back to the beginning. You got to have reserve, and you know have a reserve. Wait until the side in case of emergency. Build a team, and. Watch your overhead. Reserve. I'm giving y'all stuff we give at the conference. This is why I'm trying to encourage all of y'all to come to the Indie, Indie Gospel Alliance Conference. You need to come. I just just a tip of the iceberg. You need to come to the conference. Um, I mean, it's the best. It's the only conference that will teach you the business and give you tips on how to survive as an independent artist. Did you know... That if, you have in, that if you are an independent artist, you are automatically a label owner. People say, well, I'm just an independent artist. I don't run no business. Well, how you, well you, you can't be independent if you don't run anything, if you don't know how to run anything. You're going to be independent and broke. You got to learn how to run your business. www.indiegospelalliance.com Sign up for the Indie Conference. Make the investment. It's cheaper than any track you're going to get done in the studio. Real. Some of y'all spend more on a track than you're willing to spend on your own knowledge. This is the last tip I'm going to give you, too. Um, I learned this a long time ago. I'm a big proponent of using local people to do your music. Some of y'all are running across the country trying to do tracks with people all across the world because the assumption is, is that it's going to be better or it's going to be different or somehow more glamorous than the people that live in your own area that will charge you less to do the same work. Some of y'all just need to get over yourselves. You want to hire all these grand people and think that when you when their name goes in the CD, that the same DJ that wouldn't play your music before is going to all of a sudden pick it up and play it. The DJ going the DJ might have the same response. Because what ends up happening is that when you understand radio, you understand rotation and how many albums they can put in every month and the different things that they may need. You know, hey, you know, in the summer, people want fast music. In the fall, they tend to want more slower music. So, you know, it is, you know, everything is about relationships. If a DJ didn't like you before, he ain't going to like, he or she ain't going to like you now. 
I've had that story happen over and over again. I don't care what you put out. I don't care what you and who you put it out with. So use the people in your city. Use local people to help you. Make sure they're good. Make sure that they know what they're doing. And get your mission accomplished. Because now you're reducing your overhead. If you're going to spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on some famous producer, you're not going to make that back. Unless you have a number one hit, not just on the billboard, because the billboard is just a certain amount of stations. You need a number one song across the board. Across the board is bigger than billboard. Because billboard doesn't count B market stations, doesn't count college stations. It doesn't count still a whole bunch of mom and pop stations that are that are still in existence. They're going away, but there's still a lot of a lot of them still in existence. So just because you're number one on Radio One does not mean you're number one across the country. You're not number one until the ch church people pick you up and start singing your song on Sunday morning. Because the checks will roll in every year when the church people pick up your stuff. And if they ain't picking it up, that means you gotta rely on another audience to keep to keep the checks rolling in. Only a few have survived that way. One being um, what's my man, Lecrae. A couple of others like that. Other than that, churches make hits. Radio introduces it, but churches make hits. Case in point, how many songs that were number one? From 1 through 10 on the Billboard last year, how many songs on the Billboard last year from 1 through 10 are you still singing in church this year? Answer that question. How many songs on the Billboard 1 through 10 or 1 through 20 from last year are, are you singing in church right now? That means the song has gone away. It has gone away. Churches make hits. Not radio introduces the hit. Churches make it. They sustain it. They keep the checks rolling in. Just know that, y'all. You may not agree with it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you stuff that's time tested. They say it's kid tested, mother proof. It's just time tested. I could tell you over and over again stuff that you hear and see on radio and TV that's just a myth. For instance. If I had to stand in the Sunday's best line to get what I needed to get, I would just be fooling myself. First of all, I wouldn't win because I'm just not as good as some of these people on Sunday's best. But you answer this. How many Sunday's best winners are selling records? Not many. That means you stand all you stand in that line all that time to get popular. And then when your popularity runs away, you still ain't selling no records until you learn the business. Until you dig deep and and learn how to do this, you're not going to have sustaining success. You can have success, but it won't be sustained unless you sign a unless you sign a huge record deal, which is one in a million at this point, and they make you popular and they sustain you. But then they make you popular, sustain you. Then you don't make any money unless you go around and perform 100, 200 dates a year. You're going to be broke. I can't tell you how many artists have hits that are broke. Because the checks don't come to their house. They go to the record label's doorstep and it trickles down to you. And by the time it trickles down to you, it's slim to none. I'll give you a prime example. I represent the guy who wrote the song, I Love You, Lord, Today. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, Today. And... He hasn't made, he's made Diddly Squat in terms of that song. That's one of the most popular songs in the world, translated in many different languages. But when you sign away your rights, you make no money. So all y'all want to be popular, you can be popular all you want. Kurt Franklin told us in a room 20 years ago at the GMWA, who would you rather know you, a million people or the bank? I repeat that statement a, a million times a year to myself. Because while there is some seed in all of us that wants to be known and wants to be popular, ultimately, I want to be able to go to the mailbox and get a check when my popularity runs out. 
you'd be amazed at how many gospel artists that we know and respect and love wish their phone would ring. Phone ain't ringing. I know you think they got money, but it's not what you think it is. That's maybe that's the last tip. You need to always have different income streams. I never stopped teaching school. Probably would never stop teaching school. I don't care how much money I got unless I'm just mm -hmm. so far, unless, unless I got so many millions that I know I can retire and, and, and stay at home. Because I got to have multiple income streams. I'm doing this record business now. I got products going in Walmart. I got products going. I got two products going in Walmart this year. Three. Marinot, the Marinot, the top 25 praise hits 2017 will be dropping October 7th. I got my own live from Zion. Philip Carter SOV release dropping September 23rd in Walmart. I got Christmas release dropping October 21st in Walmart. But I'm still going to work. Because there are a couple of things that can happen. You can have this if you want. All of y'all that want this, you can have it. You want it? You can do it. You can do it if you want it. I'm sorry, I almost hit the cancel button. You can be in Walmart. You can have your single sign-in. You can do all that stuff and still be broke. You can still be broke. So that's why you got to have multiple income streams. I produce records. Um, you know, I'm still playing in churches. I do a whole bunch of other things because I know this business. It's doggy dog. I had to learn. I see Wanda. Pa I see Wanda Patterson's on there. She's been a great mentor of mine. I had to learn from several people. I've seen it done right, wrong. I've seen raunchiness. I've seen all kinds. I heard a story. <laughs> I heard a story. I heard a story this year about how uh, Charles. Uh, by, I'm not gonna say the name. By, by uh, a certain person's record was so popular last year, and. There was another company that wanted their artists to be number one. They were close to number one. So they paid some DJs off to take the record that was number one off the, off, off the top of the charts to put their record on number one, to put their record at the top. This is a dog e dog business. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm using that old pick because I got a new one coming, Wanda. I got to use that old pick because that pick still looks good. I'm getting gray hair now. <laughs> I got new pics, believe me. Look on my Facebook page. But I just did to prove a point. But yes, yeah, dog e dog business. If you don't know it, you're going to get dog. For instance, I see people pay a lot of money to be on showcases. Um, you go to Stella Awards, GMWA, so far. You go to be on these um, showcases, which is fine. I think it's good. But you have built no foundation, and you have nothing to do when the showcase is over. Okay, so you do a, you do a showcase, you tear it down, people are loving you, they're getting your card after it's over and all that kind of, what do you, how, have you, how have you followed up? Do you have your marketing plan in place? Do you have people that will follow up? Do you have the money to get to these places that the, you know, where the people are asking you to come? You have no follow-up. So now you spent your five hundred dollars, a thousand. Some people charge twelve hundred dollars. You spend all this money and you have no follow up, just for one grand old moment in the sun. Don't worry, I used to do it too. We've all been fooled like that. And sometimes you go to these showcases, and the only people in the room are the artists who pay for the showcase. Now I know that hurts somebody because I know that's true. If you've ever done a showcase, you've at least done one or two. Where the only people in the room were the artists who were on the showcase. So y'all paid all that money to go sing to each other. You can do that at home. But it's the perception that got you. You don't build no foundation. And you can do it. I'm not saying don't do it. You can do it. But you got to build upon that. You got to have something going on all the time. Not, don't let anything be end all be all. Have something going on. Have a study stream of, of, of income, a study schedule. Have something to follow up when you go out and you do these Bobby Jones, where Bobby Jones retired now. Now you do the new Joyful Noise taping by Ty Tribbett. If you're blessed to be able to do that, you need to follow up on that. You don't let it die. Keep something going all the time. Come to the IGAA conference, Independent Gospel Arts Alliance Conference. It was started seven years ago. Uh, when I left the Stella Awards 
and I figured out that I don't know enough and that the people who are like me don't know anything and there's nobody to teach us. And y'all can run to, I love Gospel Heritage. I'm doing an event for them. Um, I'm going to be participating in their regional event next month. I love Gospel Heritage, love GMWA, Thomas A. Dorsey Convention and Conference is going on right now. I love them. Edwin Hawkins Music and Arts Seminar, love them. Love all these conferences, but none of them are structured to teach you anything about the business of music. What you're going to get is the icing on the cake, but you're going to get icing and no cake. You got to go somewhere where you can sit down that's not glamorous and get the information from people who care. On this, on this uh, Independent Gospel Arts Alliance site, I listed all the people who are coming with the addition of some more who I'm waiting for confirmation from. But there'll be label heads there, marketers, branders, distributors, and I got more people coming this year than I've had coming in, 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 in the last couple of years. People that you can call that you that you can call them on the phone and give your number, call them on the phone, and you uh and you be you have to stand a ten percent chance of them calling you back. Not because they don't want to call you back, it's because they're so busy that they can't call you back. But you can see them in person and make some connections right there. Okay. Do you always have to do something to get some kind of return out of it? Yes mm -hmm. and no. It depends on what it is. Some returns are in kind and they're worth more than money. Some things we do are worth more than money. And the knowledge that we give you is worth more than whatever investment you're going to put into it. We had to raise the price just to pay our bills. But there are approximately 10,000 Christian independent artists in America. Y'all think I'm lying, don't you? I'll prove it to you. Log on to www.cdbaby.com and start and type in Christian slash gospel and start counting the artists. You will you will quickly see that there are a boatload of Christian and gospel independent artists. And then then if you want to do another experiment, calculate how many of them you've ever heard of or that you know. It'll be a fraction of one percent. So all these people are in this small pond trying to, trying to do something on a larger scale until you realize that, that, that there is a river and an ocean around that pond and that there are so many more ways, so many more people. This world is so much bigger than um, what is being portrayed to you. I just came from Poland in mm -hmm. May from doing a live recording with a um, doing a live recording with a live orchestra in Poland. Couldn't have done that by uh, uh, paying for showcases. It's relationships, relationship with God, relationship with His people, and relationship with people in business. And so I'm just really, really focused right now on trying to own it. You know, because right now, gospel music is not owned by anybody African-American. Very few labels are owned by African-Americans. Most of them are controlled by people who do, do not look like us. And they're making decisions. And when we fuss and argue about who's the greatest and who's going to win this competition and all this kind of stuff, they benefit from all that fuss. They benefit from it. Because we don't realize that, you know the power in being in control. So I'm just going, I'm just encouraging you all to come to the independent gospel arts Alliance conference. I, I do these. Um, I'm starting to do these videos now as a way of information. And of course, at the end, I promote the conference, but I want to give you solid information, not just give you a little, a little tag, a little tease. I want to tell you some things that have worked for me. So I'm going to stop right now. Does anybody have any questions? Type in some questions below. I'll answer them. I, and if I don't know the answer, I'll find out the answer. And while I'm uh, type, if you got any questions, ask it. Ask me some questions. I ain't rich, but I'm doing okay. Once I learned about reserve and overhead, I, I started, everything turned around for me. Everything. Because I was always making music I believe people wanted to hear. People have always said, you make, Philip, you make good music. But that's not enough. You got to have foundation to sustain what you um, need to make happen. Anybody got any questions below before we sign off? Ask away. It's good to see all of y'all on this on this forum.
I'm at ground roots. Where do you actually start? Well, it depends on what you mean by ground roots. Uh, have you made a CD? Are you currently working on a CD? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, if, you, if you haven't made a CD, plan your end from your... Plan your end from your beginning, Chris Watkins. Plan your end from your beginning. So plan how much it's going to cost. Also plan what you're going to do if you don't make your money back. And don't overspend. Get your overhead together. So if you ain't going to, if you, if you ain't going to press up at 1,000 CDs, if that's all you have the potential you have to sell right now, then don't spend over $8,000 on the whole entire project. So at least you'll make... So if you sell a thousand, you'll make two thousand back, and you can take that and work that towards your next project. I know that just seems so. It takes the air out of your balloon a little bit, but it keeps you from being broke. And you can and you won't have a horror story about how I did all this, and now I ain't got no money, and I can't do this no more. And then you go blame it on God. God, but it must not be in God's will for me. All the time. Well, God's been looking at you. He's saying, "Dummy." The proverbs say, "Get some knowledge." I'm with you. I've always been with you. My favor has always been on you. But you suffer because you don't have any knowledge. And that's what the hammer that hits me in the head every time I fail is because of something I did not know, especially in gospel. And people don't want to tell you in gospel because they want you to pay them to tell you. And I understand that too. They got to make a living. I understand it. That's why you need to come to the conference. There's some other questions. When and where will the conference be? in Chesapeake, Virginia at a church called The Mount, uh, pastored by Bishop Kim Brown. Uh, minister Music is, is none other than Stella Award winning gospel artist, Minister Earl Bynum, who is my friend. And he's been walking with me with this conference since the beginning. www.indiegospelalliance.com. Especially those of y'all in that Tidewater, Virginia area. You need to be there. We've been there seven years and some of y'all ain't been there yet. You need to come. Y'all, y'all, y'all must like singing in front of your say, the same people all the time. Do something different. Learn something different. Try something new. You achieve the same results if you keep doing the same thing over and over again. I am working on a CD of inspirational music, not gospel. How will your conference help me? The business of music is the business of music, Mr. Isaac Williams. So any, if, you, if somebody was doing R&B, they could come into my conference and learn everything they need to learn. You need to learn the business. Now, I can tell you this. A lot of gospel stations, uh, if it's inspirational and urban, then there are a lot of gospel stations that are going that route. And so your music might be timely. But if it's just inspirational music, um, it's not urban or it's not really gospel or whatever, then I would encourage you to seek other avenues. Weddings, um, um, seek out that crowd of people who like that kind of stuff and then find out where they um, go and hang out. It may be club. It may be somewhere different. Find out where they are. And then that's where you tailor your marketing campaign towards. That's free. But that's what you But Isaac. I know people who are doing it, especially inspirational jazz musicians who are like Kirk Whalum and other people like that, they operate in both arenas, not just the Christian market, but also in the secular arena because good music is good music. Mm -hmm. It's just good. And people enjoy it. And so the same people who probably like old school R&B and, and love songs, they probably like inspirational music too. They're probably the, some of the same folks. So I hope that helps you. Stems. What about stems, Thaddeus? What about them? Should we use them? Sure you use them. Sure. Thank you, Miss Belcher. When and where is the conference? It's, well, I told you that already. It's in Chesapeake, Virginia at the Mount Church. You can fly into Norfolk or you can drive into Chesapeake. Mount Church is a mega church. It's a wonderful place to be. It's a wonderful place to have a conference. www.indiegospelalliance.com Hey, Donald, how you doing? Any more questions? Come on, y'all, ask away. Yes, but their living shouldn't shouldn't put me in the poorhouse. Who's their living shouldn't put you in the poorhouse? You're talking about the people that you hire? You're only in the poorhouse because you didn't plan to pay nobody. You can't pay somebody $200 a month expecting them to live and to help you with your album. If that's what you're asking, Miss Pam. If not, then please help me to make it clear to me so I'll, I'll know how to um, 
answer your question. I'm looking forward to coming home and doing this great event. But Pam, you've always been a, a, a grand supporter, so we really appreciate you. I met Earl at Virginia Gagger. Earl Baum is a great guy, well connected, can really help you. Um, uh, you know, he's a well connected guy. He's in charge. He's a national minister of music for the Gospel Heritage Foundation that started by Teresa Harrison. Um, and he does so much for gospel music. You know, sometimes after a while, after you stop being bitter and, and, you know, you really learn this thing, you start to really become a supporter of gospel music, not just your ministry. You start to become a supporter of gospel music and a unifier. But you got to get over your own personal business. I mean, your own personal bitterness. And sometimes you need to get over your own personal self because you think this whole thing is in and about you and what the Lord wants to do through you. The Lord is working through a whole bunch of people. You just a pea in the pod, like me. Once you realize that, then you'll walk humbly. And you will appreciate every opportunity you have. Yes, Donald Sims, it's in October, the 20th through the 22nd. We changed it to the fall this year to kind of get out the way of the GMWA, the Dorsey, and some of these other uh, other, conference, other conferences. And I got, I'll stay on here for five or ten more minutes. Ask your questions. I'm leery about, Chris Walken says, I'm leery about having everyone's, everyone hand in my ministry. Can the conference help me do it myself? Sure, you can do it yourself, but you need to have the time to do it. You know, people who do their own radio, right? If you ain't got two hours a day to do it, then you don't need to be doing it. Because you got to find out what people's availability times are. I'm talking about the program directors, the musical directors. You got to find out when they're taking actual music calls. You got to find out which day they're doing it. And then you got to have the time to do it. And you got to catch them because a lot of times they don't answer the phone. So that means you got to be persistent and consistent in catching somebody. So, yeah, you can do it. You can do everything yourself. But the whole purpose of the conference is, yes, learning how everybody else does their job so that when you hire people to do a job, if you decide to hire people, then you'll know what job it is. Then you'll know how they're supposed to do their job, and then you can better monitor what goes on with your ministry or your career. So, for instance, you know, I hire, I have a radio person working for me. 